Hey everybody, Adam Savage here, and it's obvious I'm in a shop, but I'm in a really special shop. I'm in the Paleo Lab at the American Museum of Natural History, and I've asked them to talk to me about some of the tools they use to do paleontology. Vern, ah, Roger, Adam. such a Hi. pleasure. Okay, so I, I'm picturing that you guys sit here with dental tools and microscope glasses, carefully picking away a centimeter per week for years and years. Is that the reality? Um, a lot of times it is, depending on the specimen. Some of them can definitely, you will prepare them grain per, for grain, wow. you know, to take them out. They're like a lot of very tiny mammal specimens and yeah. stuff like that. And others, you can kind of go through them quite uh, efficiently in a decent pace, depending on the matrix, like, depending on the type of matrix you have, like... What it was lot, preserved in. Exactly, okay. like the clay. Really what I would use for this is uh, mostly just these pin vices. And, and for something like this is very, very easy to remove. And you just got to watch out that the, you may hit another, a bone could be right. sort of over over top or stuff like that, but but it's very soft clay. Would you like to try? I would love to yes. try. Wow. I didn't know so, I did this. So right, yeah. right, right here, like we, we see the bone yeah. sort of shape, and you're probably pretty safe if you were to come along on this edge here and just flake up and just... Okay. just no, not there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. no, it's fine, it's fine. You can go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I love you guys. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You sort of feel the consistency. Uh -huh. that, and it feels very... It's very flaky. And this it is, is very this flaky. is a nice matrix to deal with because it, it does go Ooh. quite good, and the bone is relatively um, hard, and so clearly so, delineated. Yeah. Yeah. And however, a lot of these are fragile, and that's another part of our prep uh, right. arsenal are the glues that we need to always consolidate. Oh, you know, while you're moving it. Yes. Because some, that might be an entire split of the bone between yeah. the matrix. You could have like a you could have like a process coming off of a bone and it could be very paper thin. And in that case you may need to sort of glue it and we have various glues oh that we um, add. So so we do a lot of gluing as well to to uh, consolidate and keep it. So we use a type of plastic bead that's dissolved in acetone. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite runny. It's not like glue that you'd use to really glue something together. Yeah. But when we when we put it on the bone, it soaks in because bone is really porous. Yeah. The acetone evaporates and the plastic actually crystallizes out inside the bone. Wow. And that makes the bone a lot less friable, a lot stronger. So this is the quote unquote glue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gluing it before it's even broken. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, in and the field they do. Is the glue eventually removable or it doesn't inhibit the research you might want to do on this? It is removable because it dissolves in acetone. Amazing. Right. If, we really, if we're really concerned that we want to preserve the chemical signature of the original bone, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't use that glue. Copy, copy, We'd just copy. just be super careful. Um, I'm curious about the red marks here. Is this just giving yourself some guidance as to your intuition about where things are going? This is actually when we collected this bone in the field, this is actually the underside. So originally when it was in rock, that's down and that's up. And obviously we discover them the other way up. Right, then. right. And then we make the field jacket. Initially we make the top and then we get under it and flip it over. And then we make the bottom. This is the bottom mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. enclosed. Yeah. Um, but before we make the bottom, because there was a lot of rock here, we want to remove that rock so we don't, basically so we don't have to pay the shipping cost of all the rock. Oh, fair. Um, that makes total sense. And while we're removing the rock, we go down to the level of the bone. But then in the lab, we want the person opening the jacket to immediately know where bone is exposed. Gotcha. Uh, so we just drew around it with a pen. Amazing. So the pen is one of our tools. And actually, we have a lot of discussion about what's the best pen right. to use. <laughs> right. Uh, and people have lots of different opinions about this. But this is a type of paint marker. And, you know, it never gets gummed up because it's distributing paint as it goes. It's like pouring um, it out of its tip. I'm most fascinated <laughs> by the pens that you guys use to make the tiny little number marks on everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know about this? <laughs> Do you use what, those pens? What, what, is, what is the pen you use for that? Because I was like looking at some tiny little numbers. Yeah. A lot of those are just these... Um, we have some really fine-tipped archival pens. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Like these... Um, Fair. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I've got some of these. And, and they use a lot of uh, um, India ink. Oh, okay. Um, do a lot of that as well to do uh, archival uh, numbering for right, fossil right. specimens. So we do that as well. 
Yeah. Um, we want the writing to stay in the long run. We want it to be there, you know, 200 years from now. Right, right. Um, so we have to use really good quality pens to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you want to move up from the pin vise with the carbide sharp, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of power tools do you guys Ooh. end up using? Okay, so, so we have, this would be one of our um, ones that, for more fine detail stuff, this is um, a micro jack number four. So these are powered by compressed air. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a, like almost like dental tools. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Oh. So these. Oh, it's making could... my jaw hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so here, you know, it flakes away. So so we could do this as well. Right. I I probably wouldn't because. I'd be afraid I might just run into the bone, whereas I have more control using sure? just a hand. But um, but in some cases you just have to because you'll run into like a patch of really more dense, really hard material. Yeah, gotcha. and then you start to use these. So here's here's a little bit a little stronger. And these are like little tiny jackhammers almost. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They kind of spin, but right. But they do exactly that. We use these typically for harder. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that is just, again, like a little jackhammer. Yep. That's yep. amazing. It just chisels away. Um, what we use it for, like, we have all kinds of different fossils we work on, and we this type of material. That's actually a block of lava. That's a block of lava. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, and th this material is found up in the Andes in mm -hmm. Chile. And um, what you find in this kind of material are these really interesting mammals, mostly just skulls and stuff like that. Hmm. And they're very small, so we do have to do a lot of microscopic oh. work. Oh my and, goodness. Um, but this material here, to get, the, to get the fossil out of it, the only way we can get it out is using these tools. Gotcha. And um, this is like, as you can just feel it, it's, it's just, just rock. Like, like, it's just a piece of rock. Yeah. So wow. it's, Time consuming and so a you're lot coming of, in and like mm -hmm. if that's something you want mm -hmm. you're trying to chip away all the hard exactly. stuff around it, yeah, but yeah. not it. But not it, yeah. And it's it's this is yeah it's and it's really the only way we can do it. Like yeah. I know there's acid prep and there's other types of stuff, but we can scan it and sometimes it scans well, which is kind of good. Because Depending on density, I would exactly, imagine. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So. Um, are there ever? There must be some cases where the boundary layer between the matrix and the bone is almost impossible to find. Oh yes, <laughs> it almost becomes the matrix and the bone is one, and that's that's when you take lots lots of breaks and, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe move on to some other kind of project for a while and Fair. go back to it because because yeah, it can be like that, and other times. It can the matrix can flake off very easily, right. and, and you can really move along, and and so it's just it really depends. Every fossil that we work on, you always tackle it a little bit differently depending yeah. on the, its preservation and its shape and everything like that. And this guy here, speaking of another, so this is all oh. microscope work. This is a little mammal pelvis. Oh my god! And this is from the Gobi Desert. Yeah, and so something like this, then then we go to these small tools again, like the pin vices and the and the drill blanks, right, the sharp right. drill blanks. And sometimes we soften up the matrix using acetone or okay. ethanol just to soften it. But basically, it's all under the scope. Sometimes we use toothpicks, and I don't have a I don't have one with me. But sometimes we use pork porcupine quills. Oh. surprisingly, because they make really good. They're they're stupid sharp, stupid sharp, and <laughs> and hard enough so that you can really do this oh. fine fine detail work. So so in this case, so this case is probably primarily all done with pins and oh stuff like that. These are little tiny, little vertebrae. Yeah little yeah. Vertebra. So this oh is this is really neat. I would imagine if you're looking through these for a few hours, working on something, and you take your eyes out, like scale becomes hard to accommodate it's, it's, for a second. It's very true. <laughs> Sometimes you. One thing, like a lot of people say that you, you, isn't this frustrating after a while or tedious? And actually, sometimes you just get in, the, get in sort of like a zone, right? Yeah, yeah. And you could be sitting there not realizing how long you've been there. And, and it is important to step out of that zone and just look around <laughs> and realize where you are and, and, and take breaks because, uh, because yeah, it can, it can be very, uh, enticing and, uh, and, but, but because, because sometimes when you really get involved in it, then that's where you can, you know, maybe 
damage something or break something. Right. Not that right. I have. I, I, I think I did once. <laughs> I, <was, laughs> I think I got away with it. No. Um, Vern, one of the things that's funny to me, I haven't, Vern does a lot more fossil preparation than me. I did a little work under the microscope quite a long time ago. And it's funny to me because you're removing a piece of rock, this tiny piece, maybe even a grain or a small flake. But you're looking down the microscope, so it seems big. And it's actually now when I'm excavating in the quarry, generally we're removing larger <laughs> yeah, amounts of rock. Yeah, yeah. I feel like working under the microscope, you're making a tiny, tiny yeah. quarry, like a tiny dinosaur exactly. dig site. That's so true. Um, it's it's, it's just a micro tools. one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little tiny bit of plaster over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and, and it is true. You know, sometimes it is literally grain for grain under the oh scope just to just to clean it up you know all the little yeah areas and stuff like that so so it, yeah i love how not exotic most of these tools are they're really pretty straightforward it, it, what tried if, and true yeah what if them, you have to cut things large chunks of stuff what do you yeah. what do you guys have what's do you have specialized stuff for doing that well we have a wide range of saws sure <laughs> sure and some of them are precise cutting tools some of them are more sophisticated than others, so okay. we can take a look at some of those. I would love to. Like. And I'll give you one more yeah, example. Yeah. When these things come into the, uh, the, the tool, the first tool we use with jackets are the cast cutter saw. Oh, the cast cutter, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And it, can, it doesn't yeah. hurt your hips, yeah. Exactly. Amazing. So this is, this we need, this, this is a really good tool. So yeah, that's that's That doesn't it damage anything but the plaster. It, it will, I mean, it, <laughs> it could if you cut into the bone. That's sure. another good reason why in the field when they package these things, they write sort of where the bone is right, so right, that right. we have a better chance. But we still are very careful about not cutting in too deep and, but, but yeah. But so this has a drawing on the other side of where the bone is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, so you can, okay. so. You, Pretty safe to say you're not going to cut through anything, Very but cool. uh, but yeah. Fern, thank you. Well, thank you, Adam. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, this is the saw. Yeah, this is actually this is my favorite saw in the whole world. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, this saw is so important that the person who set it up felt that we should lock the power cord up. Oh, fabulous! So you can only use it with this key. <laughs> oh my God! Oh. So, <gasps> no way. Is this a bandsaw? Yeah, so this is a diamond wire saw. I, what, I didn't even know such a thing existed. Yeah, what you're seeing here is the blade. And you can see it's incredibly thin. And the kerf of this saw, so the material that's removed along the cut is 0.6 millimeters. I was gonna say, sounds yeah. like less than 10, amazing. And I really like that because it means, you know, we don't expect to make mistakes, but sometimes we need to make really sure. fine cuts in hard materials, and this is the perfect tool for that job. Oh, wow. Well, so I'll, <laughs> I'll just unlock this. I'm like over the, I didn't even know such a thing existed. Yeah. Diamond wire saw. Yeah, so paleontologists have been using this, these types of, this type of tool the last two decades. Okay. There's a sort of space age console here. There you go, <laughs> we're on. <laughs> uh, and I'll just, uh, I'll just fill oh, the yeah. reservoir. You know, that's the wire, and the wire, what it's doing when the saw is active is it's running round. Oh, so really a know. straightforward bandsaw mechanism. Yeah, I think of it as like a cassette tape. So we... Um, oh, there's a the oh, reservoir. water reservoir. Yeah, and that's just to lubricate the blade as it goes. So you get longer life lifespan of the blade. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And it cuts a little faster because it's keeping clean as it goes. Um, and it's, we pass things through the saw on this gravity-driven <gasps> table. Oh, um, wow. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> so you see, like ordinarily we'd mount a specimen here. And clamp it in. Um, and we've got like, um, you know, there's a system of clamps. Right, 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 okay. Um, oh, here. look at that. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. you just, got, that uh, it eliminates so much human error because you're not pushing against yeah, it. But it means you can only cut a straight line. So then you've clamped right. the specimen down and gravity is just pulling it through here. Oh. But what I actually, what I've actually got used to doing um, because we typically want to make, we don't want to just cut straight lines, we want to cut around corners. Sure. Um, so I've got used to hand. cutting all kinds of different shapes yeah. by hand. And that's like important. This is actually an empty piece of rock, but it's from a fossil bearing unit. Okay. Um, where the fossils are in incredibly hard volcanic rocks. Yeah. Um, and you know, we might know that there's an important part here and we want to reduce the block as close to the fossil as possible, then we want to be able to cut around it. Copy. Um, so I'll just uh, start the saw. 
Um, so this is an empty piece of rock, there's no risk, yeah. but we've got a kind of approximate line we want to cut along. And there's various settings, like we can run the saw at different speeds, we can put different weight on the table, depending how we want, how fast, or how much oh, force gotcha. we want to get from gravity on the table. That's moving way faster than I thought it would be. Yeah, so cuts with this saw, depending on the material, a cut of this length, a few centimeters, yeah. it, it could take... 20 minutes or it could be done in like a couple a five minutes. minutes. Okay. And what I really love about this saw is I have a lot of control. Right. Like the traditional spinning disc saws, when you pass something through them, firstly they're thick so they remove a lot of material on the curve. Yeah. And secondly it happens really, really fast. Right. And, Both know, are difficult. Yeah. And we're working with natural materials. So rocks, they often already have a fracture through them that we don't know about. Um, so spinning disc saw, once you put the force on the rock, Large pieces of it could fly off if there's existing fractures that we didn't know about. Ah. Um, so everything is happening slowly here. Right, right. So we have much lower risk. And um, the water's doing this marvelous job of keeping the dust completely... Yeah, exactly. And then I won't complete this cut, um, but what I will do is, like, one of the things I still can't really get over... Oh, I've made a mistake backing it out here. Well... <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I can't get over is how thin the cut is. There we go. And you can take a look at that. It's like already polished effectively. Oh, wow. Oh. And for us, because we need to precisely cut things sometimes, this is the kind of precision tool that... Oh, yeah. Seems like a simple thing, but it actually, for some of our work, especially with smaller animals, like early mammals or lizards or small amphibians yeah. and their fossils, it's com completely revolutionized how we can approach those. I can imagine. Yeah. That kerf is just minuscule, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever have one of these in my shop, but this is my new favorite I know you tool. like tools. Oh, like, yeah. I went through a phase where the battery-powered angle grinder was my favorite tool. You know, when lithium batteries first came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly yeah. you could bring a bunch of things into the field to the excavation site that you couldn't yeah. do before easily. Um, but it was, it's been replaced by this. <laughs> uh, I, I have, a, on that same note, I have a particular a long serving passion for the portable bandsaw. Oh, yeah. Because it's so gentle and I can cut through almost everything. Mm -hmm. Dude, Roger, thank you so much, oh, man. It's I a pleasure. love this tool, this tool <laughs> tour. <laughs> no problem. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching that video. If while watching any of my videos you like, any of the t-shirts that you see me wearing, well, you can go buy them. And there's two places you can get them. First, you can go to tested-store.com, a web address that my crew laughs is one of the hardest things for me to remember in my whole brain. But now they've given me a second URL. You can now go to adamsavage.com and buy any of the t-shirts you see me wearing on this channel. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff there too. Thanks.